Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. I know it has been a minute, all right? Uh, just to give you guys a couple updates on what's been going on before we get into the content. Um, so Matt, our uh, current videographer, he has moved on. I encouraged him as well to take a job at a production company. So we are looking for a new videographer. Um, I'm hiring, I'm gonna, find, I'm gonna find one really, really quick. So we're interviewing for that this week uh, so we can get back on the normal schedule as far as content for YouTube. So guys, we're, we're, we're coming back on there, don't worry. Uh, and then in addition to that, I just wrapped up my new training on uh, zero to 10K, right? Which is my exact blueprint, start to finish, on how to do deals virtually, right? How we're doing deals over the phone, how we're selling them over the phone, and how we're also locking them up over the phone, all right? So guys, I dig deep into that. That's at 10kmonths.com. Um, but what you're about to see here in a second is me and one of my private one-on-one -on -one students, Jesse, I wanted to share this uh, because guys, I knew how important this is for you right now uh, in the market that we're in. And what happened is, I reviewed some of his recent calls with sellers, right? And I'm helping refine his sales process, build out a new sales process for him. Uh, and part of that was I wanted to hear what was happening over the phone with the sellers. So I reviewed many of his calls and then we got on this one-on-one -on, -one on a last Saturday, okay? And then I hammered out, it's a good, it's a decent, uh, amount of time that we're, I mean, the call's pretty long, right? But guys, I'm telling you, there's so much gold in there. You definitely do not want to miss it. You want to watch this. Um, and whether you're just starting out or if you're already doing some deals, you will be able to take away a lot from this because it is very straightforward, direct steps of how you can talk to sellers better, build better rapport, flow better, get more contracts signed, which will lead to more deals, all right? So I pointed out uh, multiple things throughout those calls that I listened to, um, and I coach him through how to get better over the phone, what to say, when to say it, how to say it, all right? Uh, and some of the stuff that he was doing wrong that we're correcting, and then some of the stuff that he wasn't doing at all that we're gonna implement, okay? So guys, check this out now. Uh, also, the link for the new training is down below, 10K months. Dot com. Uh, so check that out, but go in here now, watch this, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so I went over those calls, and definitely I have about you know, a, a good amount of points here that I want to go over just based on like what I heard on those. And what I'm thinking is, uh, and also got the sales process as well. So okay. what, what I want to do today is let's go over these points from the calls, right? Because it's a good amount. Um, and then, you know, let's, let's jump on another call Tuesday and then get into the actual process side, because this is going to be quite a bit of stuff right here. Um, cool. just based on those calls. Right. And I don't want to like overload you with, with too much at one time. So, it, <laughs> and, and those calls, I chose those, um, like you said, and you actually kind of reinforced afterwards, like they were just difficult calls. <laughs> right. right. So that, lady was, that lady cracked me up. Yeah. She's she was, funny, right? Yeah. yeah. She's funny. So I'm, I'm glad we get to talk about those, but normally they, it doesn't go like that. Normally I can get people to open up a little bit even like the really harsh people, like I can get them to be like, oh yeah, I had a similar situation like that. And it really goes a lot better. Cause I actually feel like I'm pretty good at talking to people, but those ones were just kind of like, I right. just felt like I'm drilling them with questions and they had nothing to say to me. And I'm kind of like, all right, well, I guess I'm not going to get anywhere. So just right. to give myself a little credit on that one, I'm, I'm really not terrible on the phone, but I, I can't wait to hear your points. And that's actually one of the notes I had down was, um, about those calls and where I can improve because when um, the direct mail comes in, I feel like right. those people are ready to talk, but the texting has been tough um, to get people to, to talk to me. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, one thing I'll, I'll say is uh, that other guy too, uh, with, he said that they were doing adult things, you know, and that's why the bat, the shower and the mask. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't that awesome? That was a that was a nice overshare right there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm like, oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all right, well, let's get right into it, man. Um, all right. So, first things first. Uh, one thing I noticed right at the beginning of the calls 
is there is no expectation set, right? Uh, and, and what I mean by that is this, like whenever you get on a call, right, with anybody, then you want to at least lay out, hey, this is almost like an agenda really quick, a brief overview of what the call is going to look like and roughly how long that's going to take, right? So they understand that right from the beginning. If not, what can happen is this. If, you know, they have something they got to do or they got, you know, someone – someone calls in or they're expecting a call, whatever that is that's happening in normal everyday life for somebody at that time, if they don't have and understand what those expectations are, then, you know, that can, if they have something going on in the back of their mind, that's going to build frustration up and they're not going to be in the right state of mind, right? That you need them in in order to say yes um, and sign a contract, right? And want to do a deal because they're going to be focused on something else. So yeah. doing that, you know, obviously eliminates that anxiety they might have, or, you know, frustration, potential frustration. Um, and then also just, you know, it builds comfort, right? Because now they understand what's in front of them. Okay. Quick question on that. So sure. I had a perfect scenario like that come up and yeah. the lady, I call her back. This house is like, okay. hey, the numbers already like work where she's at. I call, right. finally got her after calling like three times and then she's like what do you need I, i'm on the other line so then i was like okay so should i say okay i started and i was like okay let me just get some information and i'll make it brief so i did shorten it but right. i didn't want to say well let me call you back because it was really hard to get a hold of her and who knows if i would have got right. her again what do you think about that uh, i mean in that scenario i would just get straight to the point um, you know, right from the beginning, as soon as you have her and just say, Hey, you know, based on what I see and based on what you were asking for the property, it looks like, uh, this is a very good possibility. So do you have a moment now to just go over, uh, you know, a few questions and, you know, it, it could literally be as short as, you know, five to 10 minutes or whatever, at least to get that initial report and everything, if she's got to go. But I, I would just get straight to the point. I mean, because that's really what she asked for, right? Is for you to get straight to the point. So that's what I would do and let her know what that is, um, especially when you're talking about a lead like that, that you think you can pay that price likely anyway, then yeah, I would just give her exactly what you, you know, the, I would answer the question directly like she asked you the question. Okay. That's so what I would do. And then that should be enough to, you know, based on that, you know, because think about it, you're not going to really like hook her and engage her in a conversation if she's like, hey, I got to go. What do you need? But it's like, hey, all right. So we need like 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and do all this and that. Instead, I would just come right in and let her know like, hey, based on what you're asking, based on what the market looks like, it looks like we could probably do that. So do you have some a few minutes right now to where we can lock this in? And then just go ahead and assume that you'll be able to move forward. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I and figured that so with that, I, I see how like on a normal call, then set the expectations, lay out kind of what sure, you're sure. and what they're going to get from the time frame. Okay. And usually yeah. you give them like a five to 10 time minute. Cause sometimes like people keep talking and it takes like 20 minutes. Sure. Like, of course. That range. Yeah. It, I mean, and we'll even, we'll talk about that a little bit more too later on um, in some of the other notes, but yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I would say, um, I mean, truthfully, dude, like you should be trying to probably get people in like Zoom and stuff like that um, and setting those up. But then you got to prep beforehand. We'll, we'll start talking about that, like when we get in the sales process and everything um, next week. But for now, let's just let's just keep moving. Um, so one thing I did notice when she said that it had that extra bathroom. Right. Even though we're obviously going to go back and look at the permits, which I see you did and you talk to her about that later on in the second call. Um, I, I would still just ask, ask them like, Hey, you know, so that's interesting. Is there a reason why it wasn't recorded? Did you ever get this permitted? Just ask them that question because they're going to know more than the County. If it, if it isn't at the County, you know, eight times out of 10, that means that it probably isn't permitted. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's also another, like you're, you're setting up later on when you get into making the offer and everything else, when you're trying to justify it, you know, all these things come into play and without directly, you know, addressing that with them. Uh, did you look up to see if it was permitted, by the way? I, I seen you see, you looked up the other stuff, but did you look and see if the bathroom was? I didn't, I didn't even think about it because the house did have a lot of additions and a lot of weird, it had a lot of blocks on it because it's a huge house. It's like 20 or 2,600 square feet. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, I, I mean, that's just one thing that I didn't notice there, just a little thing, but 
Um, and then here, here's the other thing. It's like, um, this is something that I noticed right from the beginning. It, dude, like you're, you're good on the phone with people, right? Like you, you really are like, you're easy to talk to. Um, and, and what's, what's cool is you just need to have more energy, right? It was just a little low energy. It wasn't very commanding of, Hey, like you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're speaking very direct to them and giving them real, real, uh, you know, points of value, but like confirm value. Like, you know, this because you're professional, like you, you understand the market, you know, just coming across with that authority is going to get you a lot, uh, a lot further because, um, you know, you're controlling the call, right? That is, so you're setting the expectations, the agenda, like you're running this appointment. Like you got to think about it like this every time that, you know, you you have any kind of a phone appointment, in-person appointment, you know, that entire appointment is a, is a presentation really. And when you think about it, right. It, it's, it's, it's really just a presentation, right? Like you're trying to make a sale ultimately. So from, the beginning to end of that needs to flow as like a solid presentation leading up to a decision, right? Um, where you build enough rapport, comfort, credibility with them to where at the end of that presentation, they're willing to sign a contract and do a deal with you. So, um, you know, just, just more like upbeat with authority um, and, you know, put really giving them the understanding like, Hey, I know what I'm talking about. Um, and you know, you're just making confirmations, right? Like you're not making, um, you know, it, it might be this or it might be that it's fair. Like, Hey, this is what it is, mm -hmm. you know, because I know what I'm talking about kind of thing, not in a, a dick way. Right. But in a, you know what I mean? Just very direct and obviously polite and everything. Like you're really good about that. Just a little bit more upbeat and like where it'll flow better. Yep. Um, I, I really try to, a match the tone of the people also so yeah, if they're yep. if they're just kind of calm then i stay calm if they're really assertive then i try to pick it up and be more assertive too but, yeah um, you want to match the tonalities as well i mean people like people like themselves um is for sure so you tonalities is big that's that's a good one um and then also i noticed like at times not really as much with the other guy um but with the Chinese lady, you know, uh, I, I, it sounded a little bit more scripted and with the other guy, I guess, because he was talking so much, you know what I mean? Like it, it couldn't sound scripted because you could barely yeah. talk because that guy just kept talking. Uh, exactly. but with the Chinese lady, it just, it came across like really scripted to me and not as much conversational, right? Because it, it needs to feel like you're having a natural conversation with them, not like you're reading off of any kind of checklist. And I mean, that's what it felt like to me. And, you know, and I, I, I make myself, obviously, I, I try to put myself in the position as if, look, if I didn't know anything about any of this stuff, right? Like, how would I, how would I receive like what's happening here? And that's how I receive it. It just sounded scripted and um, it didn't sound like a, a like a flowing conversation. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't feel like one at all. She was tough because I mean, usually somebody says something. She, she was. And, and don't get me wrong. I know this is a this is probably a you know I'm sure there's a lot of them that are way better, right? I know you want, but I appreciate you giving me what you feel is like a really really difficult one because at the end of the day, this is what's going to allow you to grow the most, right? The ones that are the, like the worst of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, that's, I think that's a good thing that you gave yep. me. Those. Cool. Then I would say just, um, it, you know, and we'll get more into this in the sales process, but like better prep, you know what I mean? I noticed that it was like a lot of like wait time between, um, you know, you trying to like get into the computer and, um, you know, pull stuff up and everything like that. And there was a lot of like delays there. Um, and then that affects, right, the overall tone of the entire call with you, like, laying out the agenda, what's going to happen, setting the expectations. It's like it, all that stuff has to be ready in order for it to really flow well and make mm -hmm. sense to them, right? If yeah. not, they're just kind of like they start getting confused a little bit and it's it just – Right. Mm -hmm. And have any kind of confusion going on, like throughout this entire process or this appointment. Um, we need them like clear minded, willing to make decisions based on clarity. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's, that's another thing that I noticed. We'll get more into that though. Like I said, in the sales process side, um, cause that's more related to that, but I just wanted to go ahead and bring it to your attention now that that's something okay. I found. I'll save my questions for that one then. Yeah. Um, then I would also say, uh, so whenever you're trying to get pictures, okay. And this is also more related to the actual sales process itself as well. And you know, I, I'm going to, I'll help build that out for you. Right. Like, you know, when we look at that next week, but, um, giving more options for pictures, you, you know what I mean? So, uh, what you can do is, is I assume what, why did you just say email instead of allowing, uh, them to text you? Is that because you use call rail and you can't receive images on call rail? Is that why? Right. And then also the number that she was texting me back on, I won't, I only can't even get a phone call through or a text through launch okay. control now when I put it back through. So my, I'm having the same problems that you're having with it. So I can't, so I didn't want her to send it through there and nothing come through. So that's why okay. I opened up that idea. But if there's other suggestions, that'd be great. Cause I've actually been, it seems like people really struggle with technology. Anybody I talk to, even if they're, like, right. she seems like she's younger. So if you had another suggestion, that'd be great. What I'll usually do is I'll say, Hey, here's my personal cell phone number and I'll give my Google voice number. But then, then it kind of confuses people because then there's another number in the mix. So I try to okay. streamline it. But that's right. why I said email for her. And actually, I stopped asking for pictures <laughs> because um, one of my thoughts was, um, we're going to find out eventually anyway. And like, for pictures, and she sent me a picture of the outside of the house. I'm like, I can get that on Google Maps. I didn't want to tell her it's completely useless. Like she sent me one picture of the outside of the house. I was like, wow, it's useless. So what I kind of thought was, I'll save that for when I get there to renegotiate on the price. Cause if oh, I see what it looks like. So. Right. Right. Well, I mean, that's because she don't have any kind of guide to go off of either. You know, you got to understand if someone, you know, doesn't know much about photography or how to take pictures. Or, uh, I mean, see, we make the assumptions that everyone just knows how to take photos and stuff, but like mm -hmm. they, there's a lot of people that just really don't, you know? Um, so, I mean, really another thing that gets built into the process is, you know, helping them understand how to take the pictures, right? Okay. That's, that's just another part of it. And then, uh, you know, in addition to that, what we do is we give them, we use Scipio and we have a phone number just for that. And it's free up to so many. Um, and you can download it as an app, you know, on your phone and it's for text. So really, uh, <laughs> I mean, we use that and then we'll just give it to them, right? If they want to text us and receive the images and we know um, what property that's related to. And then we'll also give them the email option or a Dropbox option. So we give them a, you know, a few different options to make it as easy as possible for them. And then we'll also show them, you know, how they need to do that. And ideally you have that before you get on the phone with them. You know what I mean? Like for the actual, like, you know, sales side of it, the presentation mm -hmm. itself. Um, but all right, let's, let's keep going. Um, you know, one thing I did notice is, uh, you know how I talk about, uh, and I made a note on this actually twice, I believe, um, you definitely, so yeah. So it, it, for me, like the way that you presented the offer to her, like you made the offer, the market didn't, I know you talked about the market at a point, like after that. Um, as far as, you know, a correlation to the offer and everything, but I thought it was, a, it was a little too indirect. And I think that it wasn't as powerful being there as it would have been like when you present the offer, right? That's when you, there's the real power and weight in that. Um, and I, I definitely feel like it was a you versus her right vibe which is the exact opposite of what we were looking for right. um, and that's why it's so important to when you make the offer that it's the market making the offer so it's always more of like well the market is saying you know based on this this and this that you know we could pay this but it's never like you directly the market directly makes the offer you're just the one that um is there to buy it if they're willing to accept what the market says it's worth mm -hmm. and and refresh my memory on that. So did I give, did I tell her, well, here's what I would be. And then I said, yeah. okay. Basically. And then, and then I think it was a couple sentences after that, after you guys went back and forth, then you got back into, well, you know, the market's like here and everything else, but it wasn't 
it, it didn't, it still didn't come off as, Hey, the market is making this offer. I'm not making this offer to you. It, it, it gave me the you versus her, right? That's, that's how it felt to me. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's, you got to make sure that you, you present that like when you're doing the offer, right? Like, and then you can reiterate it and everything else. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think it's important to do that as well. But when you're making it, that's, that's where it's like, that's where it's the most important. Got it. So come in and say, so what I see, here's the comparable. So if this house is um, $35,000. I found another one that's similar for 37 right. and this one's for 24. I'm assuming yours is a little better than that. So um, it looks like what the market's able to bear is about 35,000 and that's where we would be. Is that what you're saying? Something like yeah. That it, it, yeah. It's more of, Hey, based on what the market is saying, uh, you know, we can pay this, right? Or um, based on the market, it looks like the property is worth this, right? So it's like you're always positioning as like the market is always the enemy, right? You're, you guys are on the same try side trying to make a deal. The market is the one that you're both working against. So you're always on the same side versus it's you versus the seller. That's, that's the common mistake that most people make. And yeah. uh, it's, it leads to way less deals, right? So if you can become great at that, that's, that's a huge part of it. Um, great. Yeah. Okay. So uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So I did notice this at the end of the first call, right? Like there wasn't a going back to the expectations. Uh, there was no like defined, Hey, okay. So you're going to send these pictures. I should be able to expect them by this time. And then we're going to go ahead and jump back on the phone this time. So you go ahead and you set that date. I mean, one of the worst things you can do is like, you know, just leave it like open. Right. Because then that's, that can be, you know, indefinite that, that don't even necessarily mean you guys will ever jump back on the phone. So re reconfirming and setting that appointment and those expectations. Now you're continuing on there. Here's our second appointment. Right. Um, and this is the time that it's going to be, when can I expect the pictures that way? All right. So I'm going to need this much time to repair after I get them. Let's jump back on the phone for our second appointment at this time. And then that way you always have everything set and it's never a like, like, all right, I got to get back in touch with them in order to like, you know, confirm this time or figure out a time or whatever. Just you, you're not, you know, setting that next step in the process to be concrete and firm. Set expectations with the Yeah. So you're always setting expectations at the, the beginning and the end, right. Of every call, whether it's, Hey, I'm going to keep following up with you. Or, you know, we're going to get back on the phone at this time. I'm going to follow up on, you know, you sign kind of whatever it is. Like, you know, there's always an expectation and a next step. So everyone understands and they're on the same page. And again, this, this comes back to the comfort, right? The trust, the rapport, like you're, you're just, you know, you're guiding them through the process, right? And um, it isn't because remember, the only one that needs to be uncertain at any time is them. Right. Like, and then, you know, by you being certain though, that's what's going to end up making them certain that they want to do business with you and sign the contract at the end. Right. Because they're going to be on short, sure from the very beginning. That just comes with being skeptical. Right. Yeah. Because they are, they're skeptical. So they're not sure or not whether or not they're, they'll do business with you or not, but because you're certain throughout the entire process and they understand the process, then, you know, that's going to build a lot more comfort to make them certain. You see what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. So that was the initial call to the follow-up. Right. That was the end of the first call with the Chinese woman. Um, and then the second call. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. Um, yeah. So uh, we already talked about, you know, speaking with the authority. Uh, we already talked about you made the offer. The market didn't. Um, another thing we'll talk about is refining uh, your value pitch when you're justifying the offer. Uh, meaning like going more in depth on uh, digging deeper of like what it looks like if they do not get this sold um, and then helping to build a better understanding that if there's a mortgage on the property, keep in mind, like, so you need to know when you're on that call with them, Hey, what is the average days on market? You know what I mean? In that zip code right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it's 60, 70 days, whatever it is, Hey, so again, you're speaking from authority. You're like, you're uh, 
you know, you're an expert in the market, right? So on average right now, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, you know, it looks like the properties in that area are, uh, you know, at average days on market before they actually find a buyer and go under contract is 70 days. So I just want you to understand that you, you still have realistically another 45 to 60 days if everything goes perfect after that, even to get closing probably. So you're looking at these four months, five months, whatever it is. Um, and understand if you have a mortgage, then you're going to make mortgage payments every month. You're going to pay taxes every month, insurance, you're going to have the basic uh, utilities and upkeep and maintenance on the property for that time. You're also going to be paying for the realtor commission, the closing costs. So you got to refine that value pitch and help them understand how much value you were bringing to the table to them. Right. And I think that that was very overlooked in that call, even though she is being realistic, like those are the people that is most important, right? To make sure they understand that because you never know when someone like you say just that one thing that might be like a, a soft spot for them where like something clicks and like, oh wow, I didn't think about that, right? And then it becomes a completely different conversation. So if you don't really get deep into that with them though, then you'll never have that opportunity to get that turnaround. Um, so definitely, you know, more about understanding your personality types, um, to, you know what I mean? Just making sure that you're dialed in on that. And I know that we talked about that before, uh, mm -hmm. you know, briefly in the past. So do you have, do you have all those, you know? Yep. Yeah. So the analytical, the, right. um, the driver, you know, like driver to make people happy. happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Social conscious. Yeah. So you gotta, you know, just, just make sure to go back and just re, you know, browse over those really, because remember, you know, you gotta just understand those in depth. So when you know that when you get that, just that particular personality type on the phone, there's a certain way that, you know, you got to speak to them and everything else, matching that tonality, making sure that, um, you know, you can also hit the points that they're going to care about. Right. Like, you know, if you understand that personality and you know, they care about all the neighbors and everyone around them, then guess what? Like, it's all going to be about making, you know what I mean? Like improvements to the house, making it beautiful, you know, helping restore the, you know, the neighborhood community, all that stuff. Right. So when you understand that, then you understand more of what to say throughout the conversation for rapport building. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I was going to just ask, I feel like I'm pretty good with the analytical and the social conscience. Sometimes the driver, since I'm not a driver, um, right. I like to analyze and try to tell that. And so I have been working on that one. Um, but your suggestion of get a contract, get under contract. I think that'll help me with the drivers because they want it right now and give them the price and do it right then rather than, yep. Hey, let's do a more analogy on it. So that's, I think that's going to help me. And that suggestion by itself has been really helpful. Okay. Yeah, good. Because at the end of the day, you know, and that also goes back to the preparation side too. Like the drivers hate waiting on anything. Like <laughs> absolutely hate it. So if yeah. they have like a 30 second pause in between you guys saying anything because you're looking something up, they're frustrated. I promise. Yep. So, exactly. I mean, you'll, you'll even do better with the drivers making sure like as we build out that sales process, um, and then it's very streamlined and it's always on point. That'll help you a lot as well with the drivers. Yeah. Um, so here, here's the thing, man, like really at the end of the day, um, you know, the best salespeople have three things, you know, in common, knowing what to say, when to say it and when not to say anything at all. Right. So I, I just want to, I want you to think about that, you know, as like you go over, you know what I mean? These notes. And I'm not saying that you're bad at that or anything else, but I just want you to like, as you're viewing everything and like we're building out this, this process and you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're practicing and everything else. Um, you know, just keep that in mind. Cause that is really true. You know, they always know what to say, when to say it and when to say nothing at all. And, and I can tell you, dude, if you can master those three things, right. Regardless of, really sucking at almost everything else, you'll still probably do a lot of deals. If you could just master those three things right there, um, which I think you can. So, I, I mean, really, I think uh, based on everything I gave you, I gave you quite a bit of, quite yeah. a bit of feedback. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what I want to do is uh, we won't get into the uh, number. Uh, one thing I do want to know though, uh, we'll get into the numbers on Tuesday, but did you get any more contracts? Have you got any more deals? 
I sent one that's a couple of my questions for you. Um, actually, I have like, I guess it's three full question. I don't know how much time okay. you have. But sure, I'll talk sure. about one of them first and then go from there. So sure. it, it almost seemed too easy and then I, I see why it's going to be too easy. But so I did send one contract that I actually feel like it does have good follow through. Um, okay. Turned out it's the son of an older gentleman. He's a, and I, I actually, I'd like to send you that call because I feel like that one went better. Um, so you can see like, sure. hey, I feel send like this call went really good too. Um, okay. And I think he called me back on call rail, so it should be recorded. So I'll double check. But okay. um, I had to give my Google um, number because sometimes call rail is really spotty. Like I'll say something and they don't hear it and we're talking over each other. You ever get that right. on call rail? And it's really hard when I'm negotiating. Every once in a while, yeah. Sometimes I get that. So I'll, I'll see if they have that one. But um, so he said, hey, we, we are building. We're going to put a modular on a piece of land that my parents own. It's in Nassau County. We got 20 acres, but mm -hmm. we haven't started that yet. And I was like, then what I did was I, yeah, that was his, I'm not ready yet. Because he was like, okay, that's cool. Because um, he said, I'm ready to move forward. But then we right. negotiated the price. He came in at 60. I came back with. Um, a range of like 37 to 42 and he said okay well I'd like to be on the high side of that and I was like oh I was kind of surprised because I didn't think that he would drop he just that. dropped yeah 18 grand right out of the gate yeah exactly I mean, happens sure I know I was happens really surprised so yeah. then um, I said okay well what I'll do is why don't I put the purchase and sale agreement out in 60 days and he's like oh okay and then I sent it to his dad and I'm calling every single day um, and he's like, well, my dad, I do the negotiations. He's the old timer. So he doesn't do all that stuff. So where we're at as of this morning is he's like, well, I want to wait because we want to be out of the house before we sign the contract. So then what I did is because I still want to get, how does that contract. make sense? Right. Exactly. Why wouldn't you want to have a contract before you get out of the house? I know. That's why it was almost yeah, kind of like, sounds, that sounds with BS me. to me. Yeah. That sounds yeah. BS to me. Exactly. I don't think he's being honest with you. I know there's something I'm missing, but then what I said was like, okay, well, let's do this. I'll adjust the purchasing sale contract. It says when you're out of the house, we'll set the closing date. Because mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get is some sort of commitment so that they, he can't just go walk away and be with anybody else. So that's what I'm trying to do. Well, this what would is, you suggest in that situation? Then I would say, unfortunately, you know, I only have enough money to buy so many houses. And at the end of the day, like really you just got to, on some of these, you got to shut the door right? And do the takeaway. So I only have enough money to buy so many houses. And, uh, you know, I talk to new people every single day. Um, and, you know, I plan on buying this many houses this year, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to buy houses from everyone I speak to. So I can put this money to the side, you know, for this deal, but I can't just hold it there waiting to sign a contract. I need to have that you know, that confirmation that I'm going to be able to move forward or else I can lose money holding this money over here that I could go buy another house. Okay. That's so, pretty much what I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what way. I would tell him. Um, yeah. yeah. what did he say when you told him that? He said, he said, okay, he wasn't like, yes, that's a for sure. We're going to sign it. But then what that does is it just puts an unknown date on it for me. So then it's kind of like just a limbo contract. You know what I mean? So then yes. is it really going to be viable? Okay, so he's willing to do it, but he's not willing to put a date on there. Right. Okay, so what you need to do is just put a content. You need to put a date on there. All right, for one thing, you got to put a date, but you got to help them understand that um, you can, you know, extend that out, right, as needed. But, you know, you can, you can put restrictions on that. Like you can extend it this many times and within these durations, you can do that. Um, or, you know, you could say, you know, we can go as far as up to, uh, you know, four months or three months with what's going on right now, maybe even shorter, you know what I mean? To where it's like almost got to be reevaluated. Like if it goes past two months, right? Like, yeah, we can push it out to two months. That's fine. But unfortunately, because of what's going on in the circumstances right now, um, at that, like when we're coming up at that time, I got to make sure I reevaluate it. If the market, you know, just crashes, all of a sudden, and then the value goes down to half of what it's worth now, then obviously that's an issue, right? So I have no issue. So you're kind of like putting a little bit of pressure on them to kind of like figure out what the hell they're going to do, right? So it's like, sure, we can lock this up, but just understand like if we hit like these, these, uh, you know, checkpoints as far as like durations and time um, throughout the process, just understand uh, because of what's going on right now, we might have to reevaluate that and just set that expectation from the beginning because, 
you and I both know that if it was three months from now, four months from now, of course you're going to go back and look at the value again and see what's going on. If the market crashes, you're not going to want to buy it at that price. Yeah. So you're kind of like, you know, pre-framing that now if it does happen and then also giving them the flexibility and the convenience of being able to, um, you know, figure out what they want to do, but also the pressure on the back end that it could, affect them in a negative way if they don't make a decision soon and figure it out. You see what I mean? So you're kind of hitting all three sides there. Does that make sense? Yep. 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 Perfect. Good. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause I know my, I want to get under contract just at least then he'll always know, Oh yeah, there's that guy rather than the next guy that calls him or texts him and says, Hey, I'll give you 30 or 45. And then he's like, Oh, cool. I'll take that one then. So then he knows right. he has all his options or thinks he has all his options. Sure. Of course. And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just got to shut the door. You know, it, it's okay to sometimes say, Hey, you know, it's all right to say no. You know what I mean? And you know, that way we can both move on. Um, if something changes in the future, you know, let me know. And then obviously you keep following up with them or whatever, but um, sometimes people need that door shut in order to, you know, push them into getting out of their own way and making that decision. Some people just aren't very good at making decisions. Right. So some of them need that nudge. Right. And that, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they need that nudge in order to um, finalize something. So that's, that's what I would do. Cool. And so that would sound like what I'm kind of visioning with that conversation would be, mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll send over the, the agreement with those changes in there. And then for some reason, he's like, no, I can't do it like that. I'm like, yep, totally understand. I'll have to retract the offer. We'll have to reevaluate in the future. But as of right now, it's, I can't give you that offer knowing that I don't have it under an agreement yeah, because okay. I have to earmark those funds for it. So we'll have to touch base in the future. And if it works out, it works out. I'm just concerned that in two months, the market could drastically change with all the stuff that's happening on and unemployment. So I'm just looking out for your best interest. If there's, if you want to change your mind, just feel free to give me a call back and we'll deal with it then. Does that sound Yeah, like I that? think that's fine, dude. Some, sometimes it's all right to say no. Okay. You know what I mean? I know we hate doing it, but sometimes that's what it takes in order to actually get that lead to make a decision. So. It's like chasing the pretty girl and then, and then when she says no too many times, you back off. And then she's like, hey, wait a minute. What do you mean? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly what it is, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All cool. right. Yeah, that was great got... info, James. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What else you got for me, bro? My other question. Okay, foreclosures. I've had several, like three that have no equity. And okay. I was thinking of maybe um, doing some sort of like a, a seller finance wrap kind of thing on it and then try to find a um a, what do you call it a rent to own kind of thing but i'm not familiar with those but i've had several come up where these people are like i want to do something about it but i can't and their the equity is it's high i mean there i mean there's no equity so the value right. of the house is like right there but they're nice houses in like nice areas they're like really mm -hmm. nice houses. so i'm like well somebody's gonna want to are them. they open to terms they are. They want to. They just wanted to get rid of them now that they've everything's been halted for the. Yeah, they don't want the foreclosure on their credit. Yep. So now they have a chance. So they. Right. I'm trying to build that rapport with them. And what oh. I initially thought, and I did a little more research. I was like, well, go to the bank and say, hey, I got an offer of this at cash. That's not going to work. I did some more research, and it'll go to the auction before they take my offer. And the short sale, they want way. The banks want way too well, much for short the sale. The typical issue, though, when they have absolute no equity is you know remember they have a balance to get caught back up mm -hmm. exactly. right so who who's going to come out and that could be fifteen twenty thousand dollars in certain scenarios after like mm -hmm. depending how far they are in the process you know so it's like yeah you can do those deals i, I prefer doing term deals when they do have some equity i'm not a big fan of them uh when they have zero equity personally that's just my opinion um, especially with like where the market is right now, because guess what? You lock up that deal and take it over. You know, we don't know if two or three months from now that that property might be worth, uh, you know, 20, 30% less. We don't know. Right. I mean, it's just an uncertain time right now. So I personally, when they have zero equity whatsoever, I wouldn't be messing with those deals right now. Um, but yeah. that's just me. Yeah. And that's they what I need to hear. Equity, then that's a different conversation. If they have a decent amount, then, you know, if you get one of those and, uh, you know, you want to discuss that, let me know, you know, and then I can help like walk you through that. But the ones that have zero equity at all right now, um, especially in those like cookie cutter neighborhoods, which are really common up there, uh, 
I mean, dude, like those things, depending on where it is, they, they can take some big hits if we do have a correction. So uh, I, I just wouldn't advise getting into one of those right at the moment. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah, I didn't want to waste my time on it if it's not worth chasing because it seemed like it was going to be a lot of time. The babysitting them to talk to the banks, talk to me. Yeah, and then, you know, you're getting out of your lane too. If it's worth it, you know, and there's equity and it's a good deal, you know, then, you know, we can look at those, right? I'm just saying I wouldn't, um, you know, I wouldn't try to make something into something that doesn't have any equity right now, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Good. Yeah, I didn't want to waste my time if it wasn't worth it. So that, that's exactly what I need to hear. So. Another question. We'll talk about the sales process later. Okay. Yeah, those are my two big questions. So. Okay. Cool, man. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to go over? Or you need help with? Um, no new deals, right? Other than that one that we just talked about. No. Nope. And then there's that one lady that has a really nice house. I've been. I'm just trying to stay on top of her. I guess th that might be a good something to just talk about too. I don't want to. She was already kind of gruff, so to speak, um, but she's definitely motivated her son passed away and they lived in the house and she doesn't want the house anymore. Right. Um, the, her asking price was one fifty, ARVs like two sixties, the three hundreds. I mean, it could be really nice. It's a, it's a good one. So I don't want to push her away by constantly contacting her. Um, but she's hard to get a hold of. And I don't know, maybe what would be like a good follow-up sequence and how often. So I'm not going to, push her away because it seems like the numbers already work. I went in about 15,000 less and I just gave her a range to see what she said. Mm -hmm. And immediately she said, well, I'll talk to my son. And I actually asked her, I said, is there anybody else involved in the decision making on this? And then she said, well, I'll ask my son. And I was like, well, let me talk to him. Uh, I need to talk to the person that's authorized to sell the property. And she's like, oh, well, no, no, that'd be me. I just need a pat on the back. So I guess I'm trying to give you like a roundabout way of get back into it. How do I get her back on the phone without harassing her? Um, I mean, how long has it been since you talked to her last? It was today, Saturday, Wednesday. Wednesday, I talked to her. When's the last time you tried to call her? Um, I called her every day. I texted her. I called her twice. So I, I left one message and then I called again and didn't leave a message. And I did the same. I called one and Google did something weird. So it um, it didn't go through. So I just left it alone. You I texted her, her. Today? I did. I called today. I didn't leave a message, but I was going to call right about now. And, and then see if I can get it one more time. So I would I would go at least ten days in a row. Okay. Uh, I would go at least. Yeah, I would go at least ten days in a row, bro. Uh, before you would put her into, and then still at that point, if you haven't got her, then put her in the hot follow up. Okay. You know what I mean? So in the hot follow up sequence, but that's that's how I would do it right from the beginning. Ten days in a row, boom, boom, boom. Like not, in, I wouldn't do it on Sunday. Yeah, you know what I mean. I wouldn't do it tomorrow, but I would. Uh, I would definitely go uh, Monday. You know what I mean. Good. Yeah. And just that keep makes sense. Calling, texting. Yeah, because that one's like that's a deal. Like if it wasn't a deal, I'd be like, okay, they're not. It's not ready, so I'm not gonna waste my time. Sometimes, dude, it's like you just gotta stay on top of them, right? I, I mean, it's like if it was irritating her, you know what I mean, then she would probably say something. So sometimes you gotta, you know, stay in front of them, aggressive, and you know, get them to either give you a yes or a no. Right. Mm -hmm. and yep. It's what it comes down to, bro. Yeah. Worst case scenario, she says, no, leave me alone. And, like, and then I can do about it. So. Friend the hot follow up and just keep following up with her. Right. Yeah. But at least like now you can, you're not burning time. Yep. You, you know what I mean? So you, she's giving you a no, you're going to try to turn it around if you can. Right. But if you don't, for whatever reason, then there, she's just going to go into the hot follow up and hopefully she'll come back around anyway. But nice. Um, at least you, you know what I mean? You, you're staying on top of her because every day that you don't talk to her, there's an opportunity someone else to start talking to her. So it's like, it's kind of one of those things when you got a hot one, you gotta, you know, you gotta get aggressive with it. Work. So. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Right. Good news for you. Um, yeah. so on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I hit, uh, texting really hard. So actually I even went above the 350. I think I did 450 for two days and I did. Nice. 3.50 on one day and it's nice to do it three in a row and then have a day to kind of get caught up or the yeah. afternoons to get caught up because there's so many there's so much volume and I've been getting on the phone a lot so right. it takes a lot of time so I've been getting right. a lot maybe my wife said she's like you're making a lot of calls so I've been really trying to do that and that helps to kind of break that barrier and I feel like I'm getting more practice if anything I just get right. those offers out there and, and screening so I'll be curious to see about your sales suggestions on that flow to help 
streamline that better so when I do talk to those people it just makes it easier and I spend less time on it so it's more efficient too so. yeah no dude we're gonna build you out a machine it'll awesome. it'll be it'll be solid it'll be solid so uh what about that when is that deal close uh the uh the one fourth? that's gonna yep oh I, I have more good news for you yeah so the fifth I got that close um and actually I decided to double close on it closed out no on the fifth uh, okay. Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday. Tuesday. I decided. No, I'm sorry. I guess I do have another question for you, but I knew I know your answer. I think I know your answer. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hit me with it. Um. So I was gonna do an assignment, um, but when I was looking at the HUD, it was like just so much more than what she's gonna make on it. I was like, and if she, if I saw that, I think it might be like, hey, what are you doing? Trying to do here? Trying to screw me over on this? What the seller? Yeah, the seller. And I don't want her to back out on it. Because she's looking at the buy side. Where are you so it's closing like, your deals? At, at McKillop. So they won't do a blind HUD. Oh, you're closing at McKillop too? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because I were you? McKillop, didn't I? I? You didn't suggest it. Um, but I know that um, I think in one of your – I think I, I saw one of your checks or something. It said McKillop on there when I was a long yeah, time I, ago. Yeah, we use McKillop a lot. Um, yep. I mean, but I can tell you what. Joe is great too. Here's the Sunshine. thing. McKillop um, – you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, man, my freaking air. I got these new AirPods, bro. They're, it's crazy. The new like pro ones or whatever. I think I like sure. them better. I keep hanging up on people and like I'll go to adjust them. I, like I was on a sales meeting earlier. I went to adjust them and I hung up on uh you know people uh, like four four times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, what I would do and I. I can't speak for them, right? But just just so happens that you know I'm in that market and I know I know them and I, I work with them uh, yeah. for a lot of deals. That they will typically do. Um, two huds, you know what I mean? Like sometimes they'll split it to where you'll get the seller will get a hud and then the buyer get a hud because the buyer is technically paying for the assignment. You, you know what I mean? So just ask them, uh, ask them. If okay. Yeah. Ask them if there's a way they're willing to do that. And they might only do it for certain people. I, I don't, I don't know. Right. And I wouldn't, don't tell them I said that they can do it. <laughs> yep. All right. Don't do that. But, um, just ask them what that looks like. Um, and then, uh, I mean, dude, here's the thing. How much is that deal? It's like 9,600 bucks. It, it was. Yeah. So it'll be like, well, there were some more taxes on there that came up. So if I did it that way, it would be, I don't know, like 85 if I did it, if I double closed. So, I mean, it's not very high, um, the, the closing cost. It was like $600 for the closing costs. It was 600? For closing costs, yeah, because the purchase price is like 16 grand. So you're not paying them right now, though. I'm not doing You're not paying closing costs, right? I, that's how I just on Friday I asked her to set it up so I do pay closing costs. But before so the when it was assignment, it. what I'm sorry. So you're going to switch it over to double close it. Yeah, that's what I was going to do because the the seller I think she might get frustrated about it because they said they couldn't do a blind HUD. Well, so okay. I was well, like, they said they can't do if they can't do one then dude I would just it's fine just double close it if you're uncomfortable with it and you, at the end of the day here's the thing. I would much rather risk the six hundred dollars mm -hmm. than the the other nine thousand. Exactly. So it's like sometimes you gotta weigh it out, right? And if yep. you feel that way, then I would just follow your instinct, right? Yeah. And it's only six hundred bucks. It isn't like you're talking about like a two hundred thousand dollar deal where it'd be like two thousand twenty five hundred bucks or something like that. That's a hit, right? When you do a lot of those, yeah. those add up. But I mean, six hundred bucks, and I mean, I would like I said. Uh, I would rather put 600 on the line versus 9,000. Yeah, exactly. And, and there was like, there's so many like moving parts because I have like a, a realtor that brought the buyer. So then there was a, a commission on that. So then that's on there and it, right. it's just really convoluted. And if I saw it and I'm like, okay, well, why I'm selling it to you for, I make, I'm walking away with 15 grand, but the other side says 35 grand or something. It's kind of like, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> and you're going to get a wire, right? A wire the money for the for the money i usually uh, take checks because i like checks it's fun to deposit them but 
Um, I can it, if it's no, for, no, no, for no. us. The check. That's even better. I figured you just did wires, but no, I want you to take a picture with the check. I like checks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I like checks because then. A picture and send it like, to you when yep. you get the check. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. I, yeah. That's sure. great. And yep. that uh, that testimonial too, man, was awesome. I really appreciate. Yeah. That. yeah. That good, dude. You did a really good job. Good. Awesome. I'm glad it, that came out good for you. And I, I mean, because it's all true. It's all 100. percent And it's yeah. awesome working with you. And I really appreciate everything you do for me. So. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I, hey, look, dude, I want to see you be successful, man. That's, that's what it's all about. Um, so I'm here, I'm here to help. Right. Awesome. Uh, but I appreciate you, brother. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, we'll wrap this up and then we'll, we'll pick it back up on uh Tuesday. All right. Perfect. And I had one more good news for you. Oh yeah. Great. Great. So we close on Abby. We listed it for, I think it was uh 69, five, I think. We got a buyer at 69. So I got a contract nice. on for 69. <laughs> nice. So dude. That's, that's on the market. So there's the realtor commissions and everything else, but that'll be, I don't know, a little more than four grand, I guess. Yeah. But, so, I mean, you, you made some money. You know, right. you know what I mean? I mean, you didn't really do too much. I mean, you just literally, you've never seen it. You've never walked it. You never, I mean, exactly. You know, yep. so it's like, hey, an extra four grand, right? Exactly. Yep. Um, yeah. So, oh, great. so that was good. So awesome. that'll close too. And then um, I closed on Wickwire, and that that rehab is going to be done in um, like week and a half. We're just going to throw it back on the market, see what it looks like, or just keep cool. it as a rental. So. Very cool, man. Good job, bro. Yes, yeah, so we're knocking them out. We're going for yeah. it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, I mean, dude, like I said, we can refine this sales process. Like, I think you can start locking up a lot more deals too. So, I mean, yeah, there there's a lot of opportunity out there right now, man. I'm telling you, I think the leads are just going to keep picking up. I like it. Great. I'm excited. This is great. Thanks for all the info today. And thanks for taking your time on a Saturday too. So. No, of course, bro. Of course. So again, I hope you and the family have a great weekend and we'll, we'll talk next week. All right. Thanks, man. You too. Have a good weekend. All right, brother. All right. Have a good day. All right, guys, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you know, I love Jesse. He's a great, great guy. Uh, and I am privileged and honored to be able to coach him and, uh, you know, help him on his journey. So guys, if you haven't, make sure you drop me a like and you subscribe. We're going to go back on our normal schedule here very, very soon. Um, so I'm going to be hiring this videographer probably within the next few days. I got a lot of applications. Uh, but guys, check out the new training. All right. So just, just literally today, we got off of our uh, operations meeting. And it looks like we locked up just under about $60,000 worth of deals last week. Uh, it was like 50, like mid 50s. Um, so I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but it was a good amount, right? That's a good amount of deals straight over the phone. Uh, and you know, we're locking them up over the phone. We're selling a lot of them over the phone. Guys, I'm gonna break down my existing process, right? That I've perfected, tweaked over the last several months that led us to this point where we're finding so much success in doing it. All right, so if you haven't seen that yet, that's 10K months. That link is down below. Um, and other than that, guys, let's get back on the normal schedule. I hope this video helped you, um, and then I'll see you on the next one. Remember, it's a lifestyle. Do whatever it takes to do whatever you want. Peace.